Hi all, in this video we are going to see about axoplasmic transport. Axoplasmic transport is nothing but the transport of materials along an axon of a neuron. So we will see more about this concept. So by definition, axoplasmic transport is a movement of proteins, organelles and other materials along the axon. So we know that a neuron has got an axon as well as a soma and it is a neuron soma that synthesizes the proteins. Okay, and axons must depend on this transport that is axoplasmic transport for nourishment, repair and communication. So that is the importance of axoplasmic transport. So basically it is essential for maintaining the functional and anatomical integrity of axon. So what are the usual substances that are transported via this method? So the neurotransmitters are transported, the organelles like mitochondria, proteins like enzymes, cytoskeletal components, vesicles and as well as growth factors are transported by means of this axoplasmic transport. So I'll explain this concept with the help of a diagram. So suppose this is the cell body of a neuron and we've got the various uh, organelles that are present in the soma that synthesize many, many substances. So these are present as vesicles. So these substances, suppose these are the secretory vesicles are present in the soma. Now these have to be transported to the axon. So for that it is the microtubules that act as tracks or guide wires for the transport and this is actually transported by a special mole molecular motors called kinesin. So see this is how the you can see that this is the kinesin which transports this secretory molecule here like this. Okay, so that it can it is transported from the soma to the other parts of the axon. Now suppose we have a vesicle that is released. Suppose the secretory vesicle or which contains a neurotransmitter is released and we want to take back the or uh, recycle the vesicle. Then we have another molecular motor that is involved for this. So here suppose this is a recycled membrane vesicle. This is transported by another molecular pro motor called dynin. Okay, so dynein, its structure is basically like this. This will actually walk along these microtubules and transport it back to the soma. So this is how the axoplasmic transport occurs. So this movement that is from the soma to the uh, axon that is called anterograde transport. It is called anterograde transport. And the reverse one which uh, moves from the axon to the soma that is called retrograde transport. So axoplasmic tra transport can be of two types, anterograde transport as well as retrograde transport. So we'll see about each more one by one. Anterograde or orthograde transport means the movement is from the soma to the axon terminals. It is mainly uh, carried out via on the microtubules using kinesin as the main motor. And if you've got two types, one is the fast anterograde. So based on the speed of this anterograde transport, we can divide into two. The fast anterograde means its speed is around 400 millimeters per day. And usually membrane bound organelles, vesicles and mitochondria are transported by this method. So obviously what would be the other type? Slow anterograde, 0.5 to 10 millimeters per day. So the cytoskeletal elements and soluble proteins are usually transported by the slow anterograde transport. Next is retrograde transport. So as I said, the movement is from the axon terminal to the soma and this is mainly via the motor protein dynein. And here the speed is around 200 millimeters per day. So it basically returns used synaptic, synaptic vesicle components for the lysosomes or damaged organelles or even the trophic signals that are released by the different growth factors like the nerve growth factor that is carried by retrograde transport. And an important uh, point is some certain pathogens are also transported by retrograde transport. So what is the clinical relevance of knowing this axoplasmic transport? As I said, certain pathogens like viruses use a retrograde transport like the varicella, the herpes zoster uh, virus which causes shingles as well as the rabies virus. They also move in a retrograde transport. Then we've got certain toxins like the tetanus toxin, which acts in a retrograde fashion. Again, they block the inhibited neurotransmission. That is why we've got seizures or convulsions during tetanus. And the drug that is used is usually colchicine, which disrupts the movements of microtubules. 
So in a nutshell, when a short note on axoplasmic transport is asked, you can write the definition, the substances transported, the types, the anterograde and retrograde, as well as the clinical relevance. So I hope this concept is clear. Thank you.